no plan. No, 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 no. What? All right, guys. Let's see what we can do. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, am I going through? Hello? Hey, hey, can you hear me? Hey, now I can hear you, man. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can. Let me um, let me try to get my headphones on. All right. All right. Give me what? No, no you're good. You're good now. I can hear you a little bit better. You're good. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Welcome, man. Welcome to Know the Ledge podcast. What's going on, brother? How's everything, man? I'm excited, man. This is a major move for both of us, man. This is dope. This is dope. Absolutely. We are very happy to have you. We appreciate it very much, very much. Yes, sir. The pleasure's all mine, man. I'm, I'm happy to be sharing the platform with you. I hope we are the first Danish podcast you're talking to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, man. I'm excited by it, man. I've been I've been promoting it. You know, as soon as we got the posters out, everybody's excited about it, man. So um, it's a dope moment. It's a dope moment. It's a dope feeling, man. Brilliant, sure. man. We've been looking forward to uh, to to talking to you and to learn you more to know and more about your music. I have a bunch of questions, and I can show you my my notes because it's not uh, on an iPad on a telephone. It's pen and paper. <laughs> oh, pretty old school. Old school. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And I want to say to the chat as well, uh, the viewers, uh, please feel free to throw a, a question in the chat. We can bring it up to the screen and ask King Champs a question if you feel like it. Otherwise, I will have a bunch of questions for today's live stream. But yeah, man, uh, King Champs, welcome straight in from West Philadelphia. Uh, I actually... Uh, i actually read a pretty funny fun fact today about Philadelphia versus Denmark. The population mm -hmm. for 2022 is the exact same in Philadelphia and in the entire Denmark. That's wild. 5.8 million. So that's roughly around what, like 2. Point million, two three maybe? It's the exact same 5.8 million in the in the country of Denmark and 5.8 million in Philadelphia. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. Yeah, that is a, wild, bro. That's a bit crazy. That is super wild. Yeah, that just speaks to the kind of the difference, you know, in the market you're hitting in the mm. states, which we uh, we are much smaller over here. And For someone, sure, but I mean, you know, it is definitely a place. Denmark is definitely a place I wanted to go on ahead and visit. You know what I'm saying for for a minute. So it's good to know that it's some um, uh, the exact same amount of people. So I feel a lot more at home when I go over. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm sure you would love it, man. We would love to see you over here. There's a beautiful hip hop community and some very really uh, legendary uh, venues to play at over here for sure. Absolutely, man. You know, that's that's one of my things um, that I want to do here um, with Dead Wrong Records. It's just be able to travel the world and just have a great impact with our music. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like we have a lot of strong material. I feel like we have a lot of great stuff that's out. And, you know, it's all about expanding and branding, man. And what we're doing today is a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a good thing for Brandon, for both of us. So I'm excited. Absolutely. And likewise, absolutely. And yeah, uh, I'm just looking in my notes. Let's let's start because we have lots of things to talk about. Uh, as you mentioned, your back catalog. I've been binging your back catalog for the last week, enjoying your music all the way. Uh, South Beach Visions is a personal favorite of, of mine. I can tell you that got lots of plays the last week from my side. Love that track. But let's get a story on you, nice, my man. Nice, nice. First of all, you're a rabbi and a CEO uh, representing uh, West Philadelphia and Dead Wrong Records. Could you tell us a little about uh, yes, when, when Dead Wrong Records was uh, was founded and was, what was the purpose and the vision about uh, establishing the label? Um, you know what? That's a brilliant question. Um, I feel like 
when we started is when we really, really got serious with Tina 19, because me and my brother both run the label together. Um, Amazon, who handles all of our production here at Dear Grown Records. Yeah. Um, we went on ahead and started the label and um, really started getting serious around like 18 or 19, I'd say. And um, after that, it was just, you know, just bombs away. We just really started to craft our sound, make our material better, you know what I mean, day in and day out, and um, really establish a certain kind of culture um, that is a winning culture, something where it's like, hey, when you listen to our music, it's a cinematic experience. It's an wow. audio, audio experience. Nice. You know what I'm saying? That's what yeah. we always strive for when we're um, putting our music together. So we've been doing it for a while, let's say since we was about 18 or 19. Absolutely brilliant and, and nice to sh shout out to Asan who's produced uh, most of your tracks. Uh, I'm a new fan, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's a he's a hell of a producer, man. Love his work. And I've read that the Dead Wrong uh, Records delivers dope hip hop with substance uh, all day, every day. Would you talk about what that means? Oh man, it, it, it's our uh, mission statement, so to speak, where when you know you're going to a certain restaurant or um, you're going to get a certain kind of drink, you expect it to be quality. You know that they have a mission statement of making something a certain kind of way. And we truly look at ourselves, our label, our artists um, as a complete brand. You know, so when we're saying it's it's, it's dope hip hop with substance, you know what you're going to go in and hit and get. You're going to get dope bars. You're going to get dope hooks, dope melodies, dope productions, um, all original content. We create all of our content ourselves. Um, it's going to be no piggyback and no nothing like that. Um, it's just going to be pure dope hip hop. You know what I'm saying? saying real real life gangster shit you know what i'm saying Absolutely. so like we really want to go on ahead and show that consistently through our music and what we're doing so that's that's definitely where we're coming from nice nice to hear that man and running an independent label as you do uh, it must be a, a lot of hard work and dedication and the competition must be tough uh, what would you say are the challenges versus the uh, upsides of being an independent Oh, that's a great question. Um, I feel like being independent, the challenges are you don't have as many resources as the machines do. I think that's one of the biggest things. Um, you always want to go in ahead and make sure that you have your resources in order to expand. But at the same time, you got to build your brand, right? You can't sit back and complain. You can't sit back on your hands and expect things to fall out of the trees for you. So what we have decided to do is expand to go to different countries. What we're doing right here, again, is something historic where from a networking and a branding place from Philly to Denmark, that's something that's very crazy and something unheard of, especially when you're building your company up to a certain esteem. So we always want to go in ahead and use social media. I think social media is a great tool when it's used correctly um, for promotion, for bringing your brand up, for networking, for meeting new people, for doing new things. So I think it's great to go in ahead and use social media as an asset. Um, when you start talking about the creative freedom of being independent, Absolutely. I feel um, we can drop records. You know what I mean? Like you can drop your records or your content at any time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you can organically build the fan base and ask uh, questions um, to your fans about what they like about your music, what they may dislike about your music and how you can get better. So I feel like you can connect with your fans from more of an organic perspective, your audience. And, um, you know, it's a dope thing when you know that you can just drop your music at any time. You can drop a video at any time, interview at any time. So it's fun from that regard. but. As far as expanding, you definitely want to go in here and get those machine dollars behind you. But with keeping your integrity in play, you know what I mean? From what Absolutely. you've built, you don't want to kind of sell out to the machine and kind of let your message or whatever impact you want to go in here and put on the game um, be sidetracked. You know what I mean? So I think those are some of the pros and cons of being independent for sure. Excellent, excellent answer, and I respect the grind all the way for sure. I also, I also heard you say in another interview that the content never gets old. I really like that statement. What did you mean about that? 
Oh, man, uh, the content never gets old because you're constantly in a creative state. You know what I mean? You're constantly looking for new ways to get better, um, new ways to, you know, push your music in the right direction. Um, I really feel that when you're building content, you want to go in here to have as much fun with it. But I feel like the basis of what all content creators do is we want our product to be elite. We want our product to stand out. You know what I mean? We want our product to be next to the other products and say, you know what, I'm going to press that guy. You know what I mean? I'm going to go ahead and look at that guy and see what he does and see um, what he's bringing to the table. So I feel like when you're, you know, when you're bringing um, new ideas up, when you're looking to do new things musically or from a um, promotional standpoint, the content never gets old. That's including interviews. That's including videos. That's including your music. You know what I mean? Voiceovers, reels. You're constantly in a state of creation. And your content shouldn't get old. You should always look for new ideas. Also, but very, very well put into words. Absolutely. It makes sense in my world because when I'm researching uh, for a guy like you, I take the whole package, the whole back catalog of tracks, even if they're four, four years old or anything. It means a lot to the whole picture of the artist. But I think I will bring in, uh, I had a couple of questions in the chat, if you don't mind. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Great. Martin, which is the producer of our podcast, he asks, uh, which rappers have been most influential to you and much love? I oh, appreciate that. Appreciate that, brother. Um, I think all of the legends, man, to be honest, you know, um, anytime you start talking about, you know, the brand names, you know, uh, your Biggies, your Tupacs, your Jay-Zs, your Nas's, your Mob Deeps, your Woos, you know, um, those real legendary guys, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, um, UGK, 8-Ball, MJG. I mean, I'm a student of the game. So Absolutely. just listening to all of the guys from um, any place, any time. You know what I'm saying? Um, as long as you're really an elite musician, because I listen to other music other than hip hop, um, R and B, um, rock. Um, a lot of people don't know that me and my brother are classically trained musicians, so I played the piano earlier on. So I have a um, real respect for the classical genre as well. So anybody really to answer the question, anybody that's great influences me, man. You know what I mean? If they're elite, if they're good at what they do. Hey man, I'm going to sit and I'm going to study. You can learn from anyone. So as far as influential, as far as hip hop, those are definitely those guys for sure. For Great sure. shouts. Great shouts. And I like the attitude. Absolutely. And you meant you did mention Wu Tang, where you can see the cover behind me. It makes me think about that was the first album I bought. It was on CD though, but that was the first hip hop album I bought back in the day. Do you remember which which album was the was the first you bought? Wow, that's that's a hell of a question. I think my parents brought my first albums, but the first <laughs> but yeah, the fun. first album I think I personally brought um was um the Black Album oh, by Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, I think man. that was the first album with my own money yeah. um that I went on ahead and brought. <laughs> and um it was a hell of a experience, man. You know, of course it was a lot of um hoopla due to him retiring. And, um, you know, of course, he really didn't retire, but it was a hell of a ploy for promotion, right? Um, he really killed that album. And I believe that um, when I watched Fade to Black, that really, really influenced me and said, you know what? I want to do that. You know what I mean? Seeing the adoration of those fans at the Madison Square Garden was something to behold. So getting that CD and the DVD, yeah, man, that was my first purchase with my own bread. <laughs> nice. And the good old DVD days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. All right. I see a question from Sonny. I'll get back to that because Casper has a question here. He says, now I'm curious, which rock music do you listen to? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a dope question. Um. I listen to Jimi Hendrix. Um, I listen to Led Zeppelin. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, the grunge scene from Seattle. Um, when you start talking about um, Alice in Chains, uh, Pearl Jam, um, I'm actually going to be seeing uh, Pearl Jam um, with my girlfriend really soon. Um, right. Going to see some tickets. Oh man, love love Pearl Jam. Um, 
Pearl Jam. Um, who else? Who else could I say? Um, Living Color. Um, Bad Brains. Um, I like a lot of harder stuff too. Uh, Guns and Roses. Um, I, I definitely love those guys for sure. For sure, some of my rock guys. You uh, cover a wide Rolling spectrum, Stones, yeah. The Doors. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. We'll bring up another question actually to the screen now. That is from Kia. She asks, what wildcard did an impact in your musical education? Um, when you start talking about just me, um, again, being a student of music, um, being a student of the game, I wanted to just kind of get into everything and every piece of music I could get my hands on. Um, as far as just my musical education, because I thought that in order to be great, you have to know your history. You have to know what came before you in order for you to know where you're going. In my yeah, own mind, excellent point. you know, you have to kind of know that foundation that's set. So when I'm looking, um, as far as me just like studying and stuff that kind of, um, push me over again, like I said, it was all of the genres of music, listening to influential people and being able to just um, learn from them, take from them the good, learn from them the bad, and just kind of really experience and, um, you know, create my own path, my own musical journey. I can definitely relate to that. It's it's the, kind of the same thing we do with this podcast, you know. These days you see uh, lots of podcasts on YouTube, uh, listen to lots of podcasts. And, you know, we take what we like from different podcasts and put it together in uh, our liking. So that's how, how we do nowadays. Yeah. For sure. For sure. All right. All right. A huge shout out to the chat. We get so many great questions. Uh, that makes my job very easy. But let's let's take a question from, from Sonny. He asked, being independent for so long, doing so much, how important is it for him also perhaps as an artist himself even to actually just elevate hip hop and the culture and and kind of sell out or be sidetracked as he talked about? Hope you understand the question. Oh, no, no, no. It's fully loaded. I'm right there. I'm right there with him. I understand exactly where um he's coming from. Um, When you start talking about trying to juggle everything, As far as being an independent artist and still being a CEO, um, sometimes it can be extremely difficult because some days you're focusing on um, the marketing and promotion. And as we know in this game, in any industry, it's almost like 90% who you know um, and 90% marketing and promotion and 10% talent sometimes. You know what I mean? Um, I wish it wasn't that way but it is the music business. So you always have to make sure that you're taking care of your business beforehand to set yourself up for great opportunities. Um, as far as, you know, my impact that I want to go in here and make in the game, man, um, it's, it's something that uh, has motivated me and my brother for years. You know, um, just being able to be at the top, you know, when you look at these different labels, like, you know, Death Row, um, Bad Boy, when you start looking at like those successful places, um, we wanted to go on ahead and be a part of that. No limit. You know what I mean? What Master P was able to do as far as marketing and pushing his artists forward. Um, you know, we want to go on ahead and have that kind of impact in the game. And I think it starts with setting up uh, the basic foundation of the bars and the beats, uh, the basic foundation of having your own sound, um, being able to control your own sound and not bend to what's going on. Um, if you look at a lot of the great artists, all of those guys had signature sounds and things like that. So as far as the impact we want to go on ahead and have, I think we're going to have a great one um, because of the artists that we have on our label. Um, Black, Frio, Ra, and so many others that we're um, pushing forward, um, I think our impact is going to be great. Love the ambition. Absolutely love the ambition. And I think Sonny, he'll, he loved your answer as well. He says, I already love this guy. So much love from the Danish uh, <laughs> viewers so far. Much I'll, love. I'll bring up another question. I think this question is brilliant. It's from Lars. He asks, uh, if, if Dead Wrong has something to do with the Biggie Tupac track? Um, you know what? That is a brilliant fucking question. <laughs> I love it. Um, yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. The answer is straight up. Um, and then 
um, we wanted to go on ahead and put a spin on it um, because a lot of people ask, you know, where did you come from with that name? And a lot of people go to that, that smart hip hop fans like himself um, that can pick it up. But we may did wrong a mission statement where we're dead wrong. We're, um, we're against the grain. You know, um, if you want to go in ahead and do something bad, we're going to do it good. Um, if you want to go in ahead and sign artists that have no talent, then we're going to put on all of the artists that have talent. If you want to sit here and show us that hip hop is dead, then we're going to show you that hip hop is very much alive. You know, so yeah. dead wrong is just an against the grain kind of thing. You know, it was a term in the 90s like, you know, you did wrong. You know, you're doing some shit yeah. that, you know, nobody else is expecting you to do. You know what I'm saying? So um, we just kind of took that um, title and expanded upon it. But to answer the question, he's a good man. He knows his hip hop. Yeah, <laughs> he surely does. He surely does. And thanks for the questions. Keep them coming, guys. I'll get back to my interview in a moment. Uh, Sonny is saying all that logic coming out. Of one man knowledge, he says. So much respect. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. And uh, Jesper says in the chat, actually, uh, to Lars, Biggie and Eminem. Eminem, you mean? About the dead wrong track, I think. But all right, we'll, we'll get back to uh, to my questions because, as I said, I've been binge watching your back catalog for the last week, and naturally, you get your personal favorites. And I also, uh, I always, always appreciate a dope rap voice. And uh, in my opinion, you have one of the illest voices in the game, my man. Uh, which I, uh, man, really, man. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what what I appreciate, I appreciate uh, that. Ah, uh, cool, man, cool. What I appreciate even more is dope bars and lyrics. And uh, when I was checking out the back catalog, as I was, I was talking about, I stumbled upon a freaking brilliant rhyme scheme uh, on the track um, "Can't Get Enough." Your rhyme ends on "Fabric Campus Savage Canvas Chances." That is excellent penmanship, my man. I enjoyed that. That was a mind blowing. I appreciate it, man. I, I feel like um, when you start talking about um that record in particular. And I appreciate you doing your research first and foremost. Thank you for, you know, um, checking out the catalog and seeing how far we've come so that you can see exactly where we're going, right? Absolutely. So um, we can't get enough. It's a record where um, Azan created a soundscape for me just to go off lyrically. You know what I All mean? Right. Where he's yeah. like, it's just enough of a dope beat. It's just enough where it's just like, hey, run over the track. Do what you do best. You know what I'm saying? And um, I felt like as far as my penmanship, I knew that with certain beats, especially if you're a writer, you want to attack the beat. Yeah. That's what I believe in. I believe in attacking the beat in a certain way with a certain level of aggression, with a certain level of penmanship. And when you're writing that kind of shit, it catches the listener. Where it's Absolutely. like, whoa, like this is a hell of a line. This is something that he's doing that's different, and I fuck with that. So I'm glad that you were able to tap into the experience that I wanted to go in here and put off, man. Thank you. That is perfect, man. But all, also the flow, it's it's obvious you got the musical understanding because the flow in that rhyme scheme makes it just even better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, man. Uh, in 2020... You guys, you released the album Dawn of the Dead, uh, where a lot of different rappers uh, features on. Could you talk about a little bit about that release? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Dawn of the Dead um, means so much to us from a um, personal as well as a professional level. Um, during that year, um, our grandmother had passed. Me and Azam's grandmother had passed. And it was a couple of months before we went on ahead and started recording. And it was in the middle of the pandemic, and we wanted to go on ahead and kind of create something great um, and be motivated for. You know what I mean? Um, we wanted to go on ahead and push forward and show people, hey, through matter, no matter what, like no matter what, you should always keep focused. You should always stay disciplined. You should always push yourself forward through a, a, a traumatizing moment or something crazy. Don't give up on yourself. You know what I mean? And I think that's what that album represents in its entirety from a personal place. Now, from a professional <coughs> place, excuse me, um, from a professional place, it was a 
a moment I feel where we were making a changing of the guard as far as hip hop. I feel like right now in hip hop, a lot of guys are just using drumless loops and it's not enough music that has enough bounce to it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not enough bounce to it. It's not enough that you can get right into it and and still feel a vibe, still feel a hook, still feel the bars. It's just drumless shit. You know what I mean? Which is cool up to a point. You know what I mean? It's like if me and you ordered pizza for five days straight. I'm pretty sure you like pizza too, but five days straight of it, I mean, come on now. You know, we need a little something different. So yes, from yes. a professional standpoint, we wanted to go on ahead and create a soundscape. We wanted, again, to create a cinematic experience that everybody could enjoy. And all of the rappers on the tape, most of them are from our label. When you talk about a Frio, one of everything, him bringing the style that he brings, um, Azan rapping on the project as well as myself and the styles that we bring black. Um, one of our younger artists, he was doing his thing. Def Soldier, a hell of an artist. Um, he's actually on tour right now. Pretty Bully, who does certify, she has her own track. She's on a tour right now. So all of these different people are doing great things and moving in the right direction. And we wanted to use our platform to go on ahead and show people that, hey, you can put other talented people on and still be a successful artist. You can still show love and get love shown back. So that project opened up a lot of doors for us, a lot of opportunities in the industry for us. And Dawn of the Dead means exactly what it means. It's the dawn of dead wrong. It's the dawn of a new era. It's the dawn of a new musical plight, um, a musical journey that we're going on. So Dawn of the Dead, uh, it opened up hell of five doors, man. It's got a lot of heat on there. I can definitely understand why that is. And first of all, uh, I'm sorry for you to hear about your loss, but uh, extremely uh, exactly. motivating to hear about you took it to a strength and uh, that put it that importance into the album as well. That uh, that is uh, dope to hear that. Uh, excellent album. I, I recommend everyone to check it out. It's really really dope. So many great ra great rappers on the, on that. And you touched a little bit about the the music part because I also think I heard you say in another interview uh, you talked about that you try to create music which pleases the old schoolers as well as the new schoolers. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we want to be able to bridge the gap. You know, I feel like with a lot of hip hop artists, um, they're usually for one demographic, which I think is unfair for the genre. Um, again, I go back to us sitting here talking about hip hop. Hip hop is an international thing. You're in Denmark, I'm in Philly, yeah. but we're connected through this thing called hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like hip hop is is that big. You know what I'm saying? So um, I felt like um, a lot of artists um, are doing hip hop a disservice when you're not going about it that way, where you're not going about it bridging the gap and basically saying, hey, all the old heads can fuck with the music, but the younger guys can go in here and fuck with the music too. Um, I like to always call it my slogan, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where, yeah. You know, it's got the old school vibes, you know what I mean, from the bars really? and the production, but it's got the lit kind of sound to it that's coming from our generation, and it bridges the gap. It blends both, and it creates a beautiful experience for the listener. So when Dawn of the Dead dropped, it did specifically that where all the old heads fucked with it and all of the young heads fucked with it. And I think that the more and more we um, go further in this musical journey, you're going to see a lot more of that. You want to see a lot more. That is dope. I like that. Absolutely. And I will, we'll take a couple of questions from the chat. Uh, I see that uh, our producer says Mamba mentality. We have to remember it's Mamba day today. As Absolutely. Well. And then uh, we have Absolutely. Heidi. Heidi, who's also a part of uh, Know the Ledge podcast, she has a question. She asks, how is your writing process? Mm, great question, Heidi. Great question. Hopefully you're enjoying the show, too. Um, I appreciate all you guys' questions in the chat. Keep them coming, man. Keep them coming. We're enjoying ourselves today. Yes, please. Um, as far as uh, my writing process, um, it goes back into um, what was said earlier about the Mamba mentality, about having a mentality of discipline about having a mentality of attacking a beat, about having a mentality of being great and being elite. You know, um, again, it goes back to me being that student of the game 
when and I'm listening to Nas, when I'm listening to Jay-Z and I'm listening to their process and how nice these guys are, Rock Kim, all of those different guys, I'm listening to them and I'm like, damn, like these motherfuckers are nice. I'm going to have to step my shit up. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to, like, do this. If I really want to be great at this, then I need to put myself forward. So what starts usually my writing process is Azan gives me a beat. He has a concept for the record. Um, me and him are trade ideas on the concepts of the record. And then I'll start to listen to the beat. I'll start freestyling to the beat. Oh, and right. I, I use the freestyle in my mind as the rough draft. Oh, nice. Um, I think by my mother having a degree in English, it helps my mind process things that way. Where it's like, okay, this is the rough draft. This is the first. This is the second. And then the final draft comes out. Ah, and that's what yeah. the listeners are hearing. So I go through these stages in my writing process where it's like, okay, cool. We're going to break down this. We're going to find a start of an intro where I may be like doing a little chant or something at the start of the record. And then we're going to go in ahead and build into the lyrics. We're going to build on what the song is about, lay out a format to follow and then just execute. So that's usually how my writing process goes. Interesting. Really interesting. Great question from Heidi. Uh, and I saw that Casper, he said earlier when we were talking about the pizza, pizza five days in a row, he says after five days of days of pizza we need a steak with gravy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need something different man you Absolutely. need something different like i i don't care and even even if we ate the steak and gravy for five days we're <laughs> gonna need a little fish and chips <laughs> exactly yeah exactly the british way for sure and i can see that one of our favorites dj k5 is in the chat as well uh, tonight it's nice to see you k5 in Uh, and we were talking about actually just before I went on live, lots of people asked, "What does your name mean, King Shams?" So there was lots of theories what Shams could mean. But could you talk about that? Oh, brilliant, brilliant um, question. A lot of people ask me that um, because it's such an original name. You know what I mean? Um, so everybody kind of you know picks and tries to figure out what it is. And I'll tell you, um. It's a basis off of an Arabic name, Shams or Shamsuddin, um, which means son of God or leader or strength. Um, it has a myriad of meanings, but I basically took the meanings out of it being something of regal. Uh, and by me being a spiritual person and having a certain kind of faith, um, I definitely wanted to have something that watched over me. Um, to have God be able to watch over me in certain opportunities and things like that. So um, I wanted to go in here and put that there as far as Shams is concerned. Um, the king is, I felt regal. I felt like a king. I'm big on, you know, like watching documentaries about kings and different empires and yeah. things like that ever since I was a child. So I felt like that would be just perfect. And then I'm not a little guy. I'm like six, six, over 300 pounds. So I can't call myself little anything. <laughs> Not a man. There's no way to call myself little anything. So <laughs> um I felt like it was a very strong name and a unique name. And I exactly. think it's something that always uh piques people's interest yeah. um when they hear it. So it allows it allows me to uh elaborate on my story, elaborate on what I'm doing, and elaborate on, you know, where I'm going for sure. That makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. And it, it must be a positive and a good thing that it's a unique name. So people ask and, and get the interest for it, for it like that. And uh, I said earlier oh, in, the yeah. show, uh, in the interview that I was jealous about your rapping voice. I'm also now jealous about your your size because I'm, I'm a basketball <laughs> freak. So I could need some size, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> hey man no listen man be proud of your size man because trust and believe there's a lot of things you can sit there and do quicker than i can so <laughs> I, i i definitely would be jealous too. <laughs> that's good and good and bad excellent absolutely we also need to talk about your coming solo album uh, rise of corleone do i understand it correctly that corleone is the name of your neighborhood or what yes all right yes all right, cool. um i come from i love that you did your research, man. I, I, I truly do, man. That That is elite journalism right there, brother. I, <laughs> oh, I appreciate, I appreciate that it. very much. <laughs> I appreciate um, it. Yeah, Vaz Corleone, um, just to get into that, um, everything that we 
do um, from a artist's perspective um, when we're coming up with ideas or concepts for songs and or records or projects um, has to have a meaning. It has to have some kind of meaning. And um, we just wanted to <clears throat> look for something that had, again, a powerful kind of name, something that was catchy, something where you're like, whoa, Rise of Corleone, like, this sounds like a movie. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're going to get a hell of fun experience on it. And Corleone is a neighborhood we come from, um, 57th and Chestnut in West Philadelphia. We call it a Corleone after, you know, the Godfather. Um, you know, it's a lot of street shit that happens over here. So, you know, we just kind of named it that. And um, Riles of Corleone kind of goes in the same vein or the same breath as Dawn of the Dead, where it's like Dawn of the Dead is the dawn of the new era, the dawn of the dead wrong. Rise of Corleone is the rise of where we come from, the rise of the people who come from Corleone, being able to go into this brand new world of success, this brave new world of opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the rise. You know what I mean? We look at different empires and different things. They say the rise of this or the rise of that. So we always, always want to make our um, songs, records, titles epic and live up to that. Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely. And now we, we did talk a little about West Philadelphia. We, we can't forget about Fresh Prince, who's a big thing over here, right? Uh, the West Philadelphia thing, I think, catches to yeah. everyone. But uh, can you mention any other West Philadelphia or Philadelphia legends overall? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we might as well uh, stay with Will Smith, right? Um, Will Smith is a legend. Um, Will Smith is from West Philadelphia. I always tell people when I brag, I say because of him, um, I'm from the f most famous neighborhood in the world. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody <laughs> knows that. Everybody yeah. knows West Philadelphia, born and raised. Everybody knows that <laughs> song. So I feel like, you know, I come from the most known neighborhood in the world, first and foremost. So shout out to Will for that, um, being a brilliant actor um, and being the first rapper to win a Grammy um, as well, bringing it home for Philly and West Philly in general. Um, and then, you know, West Philly just has a big, um, a big factor in hip hop where Schooly D, um, who's a legend here in West Philadelphia, he's from West Philly as well. Yeah. He created gangster rap. You don't have sits in the morning from Ice-T and then that translates into Boys in the Hood for Easy and NWA, who I'm huge fans of as well. So when you start talking about it in this game, um, West Philly has been making its mark on this game for years, and we're just following on tradition. We're um, really taking the torch and um, doing what needs to be done. And there's plenty other um, artists that have came from um, West Philly and Philadelphia in general. Um, when you start talking about what Beanie Siegel was able to do, um, when you start talking about you know what uh, State Prop was able to do, when you start talking about um, what Corrupt was able to do with Death Row, um, he's yeah. from Philly. Um, I see in the chat, uh, uh, Casper saying, um, Schooly D, yeah, uh, Schooly D, Cassidy, you know, um, Cassidy definitely coming from Philly. I just was talking about him yesterday, how that I'm a hustler record impacted everybody and um, had people making records differently. So. Philadelphia has been a major, major force in hip hop for a minute. I just don't think from a um, label perspective, from a hip hop label perspective, we've had the success that we've had from a solo perspective. So right. um, Dave Ron Records is trying to go in here and change their narrative for sure. Absolutely. Sounds brilliant. Go for it. Also a guy like uh, Vinny Paz, isn't he also from Philadelphia? Vinny Paz, Vinny yeah. Paz, legend, legend, uh, man, who, legend. Fan. He, he's Vinny Paz with, uh, loves the music. He's he's oh, definitely nice. a, 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 yeah, he's definitely a, um, a OG in the game that's reached out countless um, times and really fucked with the music, really fucked with what we were doing. So uh, definitely shout out to uh, Vinny Paz, Jedi Mind Tricks, um, Reef the Lost Cause, RJ Payne's doing his thing right now. Um, Dark Low, uh, AR Ab, Free Dark Low and AR Ab, those good dudes, um, really dope, talented guys. Um, you know, when you start talking about the roots, you start talking about um, Black Thought. Um, you got him out there as well. Um, yeah. He's holding it down. It's so many, so many talented wow. people um, coming from the city of Philly um, that have done their thing and paved the way. And we just feel like we nuts up. Meek Mill, um, Uzi Vert, PNB Rock. Like, there's so many different forces um, in the game right now from Philly, you know. Like I yeah. said again, we want to just go on ahead and carry that tradition on, man, for sure. 
Sounds great. Absolutely sounds great. Uh, we have a Danish uh, rapper producer called Signature. He's worked with uh, Vinny Pass in the past uh, many times. Um, I think nice. Casper has a question I'll bring up to the screen. He says, are you planning any concerts at this time or are you just in studio right now? Um, a little bit of both. A little bit of both, Casper. Um, we want to go on ahead and um, finish Rise of Corleone. We got a couple of tracks to finish up. Um, actually, I'm going to the studio Sunday um, <clears throat> to do a record that's going to be um, on Rise of Corleone. So we're right now, I'm in the process of you know, rehearsing, uh, because we rehearse every time we go to the studio, we believe that you want to stay ready so you won't have to get ready. You know what I mean? You want to go Absolutely. in here and be as prepared. So when you go into the studio or any place you're going, just like you, you want to make sure that you have your notes together. You want to make sure that you have your proper lighting. All of those different things play a role in being successful, right? So um, when, when you're talking about going into the studio, we have our mindset um, to go in here and attack and that's a cute. And once a Rosa Corleone is done, we want to go in here and hit the road, man. You know what yeah, I mean? Course, we want to go yeah. in here and travel to Denmark and, you know, um, travel to Europe and all different places and really expand this brand and give you guys hella fine music. Um, again, music with substance. Dope music with substance. So, yeah, um, we definitely want to go in here and get on the road and uh, drop Rosa Corleone. We're going to be having merch um, coming out um, so you guys can go in here and get on that. Um, we've exactly. got the project that's going to be coming out on all platforms, so it's going to be an amazing time. We're going to be doing both. We're going to be doing both to answer the question. Yep. Nice, nice. And we're looking forward for that coming album for sure. And I can see lots of our viewers also have some knowledge about uh, Philadelphia-related rappers and DJ Cash Money, High and Mighty, Last Emperor. And yes, but yep. says uh, Philly has a legendary graph and skate history. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. When you start talking about the, the graffiti history here um, in West Philly alone, um, it's so many um, parks, um, so many different buildings that show hip hop uh, culture in its truest form. Um, nice. When you start talking about the DJs as well in Philadelphia, um, one of the most legendary DJs bringing back up Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, DJ Jazzy Jeff, yeah. who a lot of people don't know is a fucking monster when the wheels are still. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Like, he's a real legend. So, yeah, we got a lot of talent. A lot of talent, man. Absolutely. A lot of talent, for sure. Yeah, and he's been to uh, he's been to Denmark a couple of times, actually, uh, Jesse. Uh, we have word, seen him live. And word. Yeah. Uh, actually, Lars, ask now if you can see the question. PSK, what does that mean? Well, PS, oh, well, first of all, that's the start of the record. PSK is getting that cream. People always say, what the hell does that mean? Like, that's my record first and foremost. Oh, yeah. I love that record. Um, but PSK stands for Parkside Killer. Aight. That's what PSK stands for, Parkside Killer. Um, it's two sides of West Philly. It's called uh, the North Side and the South Side. I'm originally from the South Side. Um, Schoolie D is from the North Side. And Parkside is one of their neighborhoods over there. So when he put his uh, PSK there, that's what that stands for. PSK, right. Parkside Killer. Yep. Absolutely. And Casper says, uh, sounds cool, man, to your answer before. And when is the release of the Corleone album? And we would love to see you in Denmark. You got a new fan right there. Dope, man. Hey, hey, listen, listen. We're going to be setting up some stuff. I'm going to be getting with you guys to, you know, learn more about the landscape, the hip-hop landscape, who I can talk to um, for booking. Anybody that can help with that, let us know. We'll all coordinate. We'll all get some dollars off of it. We'll have a hell of a fucking time. Um, Absolutely. Uh, as far as the uh, Rise of Corleone album coming out, we're looking for uh, a October release. All right. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, we're looking for like an October release right now for it. Um, we wanted to go on ahead and originally put it out in September, but a couple of things kind of popped up. And, you know, life happens. So sometimes you can't just have it the way you want to have it. But um, we want to go on ahead and look towards uh, October, middle of October for a release for Vaz Corleone. We'll have singles out before then, though. Looking forward to it. Absolutely looking forward to it. Man, I'm an, I'm going to tell you, it's been a pleasure talking to you, but we will start to wrap up. We're almost hitting an hour now. Uh, it's been a massive pleasure to to talk to you, and we really appreciate you uh, you uh, joining us. 
Definitely, definitely, man. And and to all of the people in the chat, I appreciate you guys uh, coming through, showing love, asking great questions, being interactive. This has been fun. I need you guys to do this for me, if you guys can. Um, Twitter and Instagram, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, my following um, handles on both are King Champs. Uh, my name, K-I-N-G-S-H-A-M-P-Z. Um, follow me on Twitter as well as Instagram. Get all of the updates on the music. Go to the Dead Wrong SoundCloud page. Go check that out. Go follow. We've got a lot of bangers, a lot of great music coming, not only just from me, but our plethora of artists. And go check out that Dawn of the Dead. It's available on all streaming platforms. Go see what the talk is about. Go see what the musical experience is about. If you enjoyed this interview, if you enjoyed what we're sitting here putting down from this content, you're going to really, really appreciate the content coming from us, man. So um, go check us out. Go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, man. Absolutely. Plug all the good stuff. I can recommend you from here and all the way to eternity. We're looking forward to uh, to listening to some new material for you uh, from you as well. But uh, once again, thank you for joining us, James. Really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure learning you a bit more about you to know. Thanks for tonight. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me, man. And we'll talk. We'll talk. We talk definitely got to go in here and see what we can do. Um over into the Denmark situation, man, for sure. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Take care, my man. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Take care. Peace, y'all. Peace. No, 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 no,